here. Yeah, they're about to come on. Huh? Yeah, they're about to come on. Then. I got them show more. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm still waiting, Junior. Don't ask questions anymore, okay?
Hello. Is it started? Um, not sure how to do this. Would it automatically start up. It says YouTube Live streaming the YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Dave. Hi. Oh, hi. There we go. Hi. So, looky here. Uh, this is my first time messing with this particular uh, uh, platform, but uh, hang in there. Just get started. They'll probably call on us by our doctor. Oh, oh okay. Because I, be okay. I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm just. I talk about it. You know, I'm uh, I, I'm new to all this stuff. Oh, air roll. Okay. Okay, so we're getting ready. Okay. I'm just gonna participate. I guess she's not coming up today. Oh, I should. I should have checked with her. Do we have Patty? I don't see Tom Vanover. <laughs> Give us a few more minutes. We're waiting for the personnel from um, the Department of Building and Housing. Okay. And the order of the agenda is going to change a bit. The chairperson will give everyone instructions on how the order is going to go. But please be patient with us and give us a few more minutes. Okay. Um.
Pat, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Hello. Uh oh, we're getting a little reverb. Oh, we're getting a little reverb. You might have two devices on, it looks like. Are you talking to me? Uh, Joe. Joe Dink. Oh, Joe. Oh, okay. I just turned off my phone. Can you hear now? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. Good. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can yes. hear you now. Yep. Okay, Mr. Chairman, we can get started. Okay. In compliance with notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law, section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. 
abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting has the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Call-in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded by way of the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed by way of YouTube. All requests to speak on a particular matter by way of our website and email have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comment on a particular matter. Ms. Austin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have Mr. Dan Jacobson from Code, who is uh, going to be handling the um, first advisory uh, request on behalf of the city. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Chairman. This is Dan Jacobson from the uh, Law Department. Um, obviously, it's a preliminary matter. I'm going to verify that the live stream is on and functioning. Yes, we are live streaming. And uh, as has been the tradition, uh, the Law Department uh, objects to the use of the chat feature. Um, basically, the, these meetings would be held in person here in room 514. Uh, no side chance would be available. Okay. Okay. Okay, Ms. Davis. Um, Mr. Maskey. Here. Mr. Bradley. Here. Mr. Dink. Here. Mr. Gallagher. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, we'll call up the, uh, we're going to have a little change of order here. We're calling up the first uh, docket is going to be the uh, last uh, adjudication order building docket A102-23, 9026 Kinsman Road. Application and fees are in order. This is a notice of adjudicate. This is a notice of adjudication order issued on April 6th of 2023 to the various OBC codes and fire prevention codes. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing. Jacobson. Dan Jacobson, Department of Law. Yeah. Patty Austin, Department of Law. In person, we have from personnel from the Department of Fire. Could you please state your name for the record? Anthony Luke, Fire Chief. We have personnel from the Division of Architect. Please state your name for the record. Sure, Section Chief for Architecture. If you guys are planning on giving testimony, I need you to state your name for the record. Okay. We also have um, any other personnel representatives for this docket, 102.23. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Darren Nelson. And who do you represent? Moody Nolan. Thank you. Ann Hartman, Moody Nolan. Are you a call-in user? Call-in user, yes. Mr. Chairman, I also want to um, make this comment. I did receive um, yesterday a revisions to one of their documents. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to upload it in a PowerPoint presentation today. I will email those out to the Department um, Division of Architect, Department of Fire, as well as Building and Housing. So we have everybody that's going to be speaking. Yes, uh, sir. So, okay, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help you God. I do. Ms. Mr. Chairman, preliminarily, this is Patty on behalf of the city department. 
One of, number five on the adjudication order states it is a, um, it, it looks like it's a request for a variance about on an accessibility issue. And just to note, the, city, the board, should it grant any variance, it has to give the accessibility um, advisory regarding inability to, to um, vary federal law. Thank you. Okay, we'll advise that. Okay, um, who is going to be speaking first on this issue? Mr. Nelson, did you want to present first? I can. Okay, go ahead and proceed. Okay, so um, uh, we want to, uh, we're requesting a variance for um, a number of bathrooms that are in the in the fire station. Um, this particular area that's south of um, the, I guess it's the day room, um, it's, it's uh, a private residence. So we're, we're looking to um, not have the same requirements um, for ADA access for that. Um, the fire chief can better explain um, that position that we're, we're trying to take. Okay, is this the only position that's in front of us? Yes. Okay. Well, let's, uh, well, let's hear from the fire chief. The, the restroom facilities that are in question are the personal restroom facilities for the firefighters that will be on duty. That is a restricted area of the fire station for the public. Only on duty frontline firefighters will ever be in that area. For firefighters to be assigned to that station, they have to be physically able and able to conduct all physical requirements of their classification of firefighter. Whenever we find a firefighter with physical detriments, they are taken off of frontline suppression duty and assigned to three of our administrative facilities. So any, any employee being at this location at any time would be fully physical able and have no physical physical difference. Okay. So then your what what is your ask? Um, Mark Gulick, uh, Division of Architecture. The ask is that given both city policy and the actual use of facility and the fact that we are providing accessible facilities to the areas of the station that would be open or available to the public, providing two of those. Uh, we are asking for relief from the provisions requiring that these shower bathrooms, accessible only to fire personnel, um, be, we're, we're requesting relief from that requirement of the, of the, of the BBC, OBC via the ADA, or ADA via the Okay, Mr. Vanover? Mr. Chairman, this is a matter of the, it's a new facility and there are uh, public facing facilities and then uh, the quarters for the firefighters themselves. The building code has many exceptions on when ADA uh, uh, or accessibility requirements rather, when accessibility requirements are in place and with that comes many exceptions. Um, uh, for this project, these quarters are not in, listed in the exceptions in the OBC. Uh, it's, uh, so therefore, the code requires that they be ADA accessible. Uh, Division of Fire has, uh, and Architecture both, have proposed that in order to be in this place, in these quarters, it would require persons to be able-bodied and uh, per conversations that we've had with them that if an employee or a person required ADA accommodations under federal law, uh, this would not be a location where they would be assigned to work because ultimately my understanding from the discussions is that you cannot be a firefighter that lives in these quarters if there are accessibility or mobility issues. However, the code does not allow 
myself as building official to approve this on its face. There's no exception for it. Therefore, a variance would be required to not require these specific restroom locations and showers to be ADA accessible. Okay. Uh, any comments from the board members? I don't have any comments. Okay. I do not. Okay. And Mr. Bradley, any comment? Could you repeat that? Uh, we wondered if there was any uh, comments from any of the board members. And uh, I, I heard from Mr. Dank, Mr. Maskey, they don't have any comments. And so I'm looking for Mr. Bradley. I have no comment. Okay. So I can move. Um, that we go ahead and grant the variance to those areas that were so stated that only would be specific to the fire fighters themselves that would be in there and that they are have to be able bodied in order to be in those areas. And uh, we can grant that variance under um, realizing also that uh, it, it could be subject to uh, the Americans with Disability uh, Standards uh, by federal law uh, and, and may may come underneath that they're going to require that. But uh, having said that and realizing that, uh, I'll go ahead and make the motion that we go ahead and uh, agree with the fire chief that uh, we'll, we'll grant the variance for this. So move. So move. Okay, moved, moved by moved by Mr. Maskey, second by Mr. Dank. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay, notification will be sent out in two weeks. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we do have Councilman Harsh okay we'll move uh, okay uh we'll move move his next docket up i think which is a 2023 thank you chief thank you sir have a good day thank you okay. Okay, do we have it we, we, we got it. we found it right okay Yes. Okay, uh, Dr. Uh, A2023-4612 West 54th Street. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is exterior maintenance issued on December 28th of 2022. Appeal received December 19th of 2022. One second. Appeal was received January 19th of 2023. At this time, the appellant was requesting for time to complete abatement of the violations. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Aston Law, Dan Johnson, Jacobson, Law, would the appellate or his or her attorney or representative please state your name for the record? Uh, I'm not sure if you're talking to me, I think. Yes, I am, Mr. Greenfield. Please state your oh. name for the record. Okay, David Greenfield. Okay, uh, those that are going to be given testimony, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help you God. Yes. Okay. Uh, Council member uh, Harsh, do you uh, choose to speak in the beginning or at the end? I'll wait till the end. Thank you. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Greenfield. Let us know what, what your plans are. Um, well, I've made a bunch of progress. Um, it's all about the money here and time. But uh, now that the weather's broken and everything, uh, I've got a lot of number of things done that I could, uh, I don't know, I could show you. Or I, I, I sent pictures in, but um, 
groups. Um, probably starting with the van. All right, it's the first thing, the GMC van right in the front, right there. Okay, I spent $900 on getting the brakes done. I got that done, but it won't pass the emissions test yet because the injector it says something about the injector. So pricing on that, um, waiting on it is $550, what he quoted me. But I'm gonna try to get something done, less money than that. Um, that's the first thing, but I need that pulled trailer, okay? And uh, the next thing would be the, uh, the RV that's in the back. Uh, first RV, uh, I've got it all cleared out now, and it's up for sale on Facebook, what we call Marketplace, and I got over 100 hits on it already. But um, I'm starting the engine up, and I have to get. Some, I got the batteries for it, but I have to get two more batteries. They're booster batteries for the engine, and I got the engine to turn over, so I know it'll start. But I got to change the oil first before because it's been sitting for a couple of years. I change the oil and, and then treat the gas tank before I, you know, I actually start it up. Once I do that, I move that out of the way. I'll either move it from another place, another area. Uh, I can get plates for it now, as far as that goes. And then uh, that'll allow me to use the red van to pull in there and get the trailer out. But I'm going to sell the uh, RV, use that money to go ahead and bring in a dumpster and clear everything out that I've, uh, we're, you know, cleaning it all up and then I'm also going to pull that trailer out then I have a tow truck come in and they're going to pull out the other arm on the side of the garage. Uh, it's sunk down. I've already had some look at it already and it has to be raised up first to pull it out. So it's like it's a number of things. Um, like I said in the past, probably if you're in the report, my wife passed away. Our kids are grown up now. Um, I don't need a house this big anymore. And what I'm doing, I am uh, fixing it up to sell. So that's so I'm going to clear it. You know, it's clearing it out anyway. But it's just because of the. My wife went through a real long period of uh, illness. And I've gone through myself because I got disabling problems too. But uh, that's the reason we got ended up in the position we were in. But I got the uh, I got the gutters. I bought the gutters for the garage for both sides. That was three hundred dollars almost for that and the supplies. I got that. Uh, those have to be put up yet, but I do have them and I could show them too if you want. Um, and uh, I don't know, did you see the, the, uh, the video? Would that help? I could show you the backyard now, the progress we've made as far as. Uh, I think, Mr. Greenfield, what, what we're kind of interested in is uh, how long is, is it going to take uh, to complete and, and uh, these violations to get rid of them? Do you have an idea? Yeah, I'm thinking another month here at least. Uh, maybe sooner, but it'll probably be at least another month because I'm, I'm close. Like I said, all I'll do is get the thing started up now. Once I get it started up, I can move it out of the way, and the rest will be a lot easier. you got to get plates for these vehicles too, correct? Yeah, right. Okay, you and, need current plates on them if they're sitting there. All right, let me go over to Mr. Vanover. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have the same question. So you live in this home? Yes. And your ask is for another month? Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, based on the circumstances and it's owner occupied, we don't object to uh, another, an additional 60 days to correct all the violations with no further extensions. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Harsh, um, Council, um, excuse me, Council Member Harsh. It's all right. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Green, 
Greenfield. Sorry, I lost you. Greenfield. Uh, I don't know if you remember me. I, I used to visit you rather frequently during the pandemic, um, delivering yeah. food. Um, and and I can I can just say that you know these vehicles have been in this driveway for a long long time, and it seems like your plan is sort of like one step's reliant upon the other, which is reliant upon the other, which is reliant upon the other. And my concern is that that just sort of sets a, up a domino chain that never moves. Um, have you considered calling McMahon uh, with clean title? They will simply pull the cars out and take them away for you, especially that they don't run. They will just haul them away. And I, I, I bring that up because 100 hits on Facebook Marketplace is probably for uh, an RV that runs. I, I imagine most people aren't, aren't interested in one that has this much repair work needed. So have you considered just calling McMahon's and having the vehicles towed away and they will pay you? Um, well, the, the, the GMC runs, okay? It runs, I can move it, no problem. Red van. Red van, okay? Right. The next RV, um, like I said, been working on that. I got the engine to turn over. All I gotta do is get the batteries for, and I was gonna pick those up today, the other two batteries, and then I can get I could change the oil and just start that one up and move that. It's the, then I could use the red van, pull out that trailer because it's a big trailer. It's a 26 foot trailer, concession trailer. So I could pull that out. And then we could bring in the tow truck and pull, try to get them to see. They gave me a price of $600 quick. He said $200 an hour to pull it out, is what they told yeah. me. I mean, ultimately, Mr. Greenfield, I'm going to defer to the city, and if they believe that another 60 days is fine, then I'll, I'll be okay with that as well. I'm just concerned that there's too many barriers in the way because because you need one thing to work and then make another thing work, and then that needs to work to make the third thing work. And there's just too many, you know, too too many hurdles in a row. And the easiest thing might be to let McMahon's come in and just relieve you of the problem. They'll give you a check. Um, so uh, the the other the other thing is would you say the command say, for the what record McMahon? what I don't McMahon. understand who that is McMahon's auto wrecking they're on 65th and store I believe they will bring in a big old tow truck and just hitch them up and take them away for you they'll pay you for the scrap value um, but the other thing I know is you know there are some able 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 bodied young men there. Um, and, and I do know that you've got some young guys, I don't know if those are your sons or grandsons, but I mean, maybe it's time to enlist their help in this project as well. So, well, that's what I've been doing in this last, uh, uh, couple of weeks here is I've, I've called in some people to help and they have come over and they've been helping bagging everything up. And my nephew lives with me. All right. And he's yeah. 21, but he's got the ADHD and autism. But he does help. He just on a car. All right. Well, Mr. Greenfield, I'm going to defer to the city. Um, and I'm sorry to hear about your wife's passing. Uh, I had a chance to meet her. She's a lovely lady. So my condolences on that. Yes. Mr. She, Chairman, she, I'm, yeah. I mean, yes. I'm Mr. Chairman to Mr. Greenfield. Sir, are you over 60? Yes, I'm 60, uh, 68 now. Um, Mr. Chairman, we will refer this to the senior initiative to see if there's any assistance available or willing. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, all right, so motion is in order to grant uh, 60 days uh, to abate, which would be July 23rd, 2023, to abate all the violations with no further extensions. So moved. Uh, did you say 23rd? Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Bradley, second by Mr. Maskey, and that is 60 days, yes. Okay, and you'll be getting a notice within two weeks. Mr. Go Maskey? ahead, Doug. Yes. Yes. Yes, now it is official. So you'll be notified in two weeks. Uh, Council Member Harsh, are you going to be on for your other docket, or are you leaving? Yeah, that's there? actually the one. That's that's the one. That okay. Me. All right. So we'll call that docket next, and that's going to be uh, docket A twenty five twenty three, forty five twenty two Wetzel Avenue. Application and fees are in order. The notice of violation is hazardous conditions, issued on January fourth of two thousand twenty three. Appeal received February 1st of 2023, requesting for time to abate the violations. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Aston Law, 
Dan Jacobson Law with the appellate or his or her attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. Is there a Mr. Michael Carabella? Okay, if we're not having someone, I see Mr. Greenfield has his hand up. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and see what if he has a question. Yeah, I was wondering, should I leave the room now? Am I done? Or? Oh, you, you're, you're done. Thank you. You can go now. All right. Mr. Chairman, this is Patty. If there is no one on for um, docket H five right. twenty three uh, on the participants panel, if you swear everybody in, I will make my inquiry of Ms. Davis on service. Thank you. Okay, we'll swear everybody in. Um, Mr. Vanover included. Uh, Tom, we swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, to help you, God. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To Ms. Davis, did the notice of today's public hearing be, get returned to the board's file for any reason? To Mr. Chairman, to Ms. Aston, no. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. To Ms. Davis, did you receive any communication, emails, fax, voice message, etc., on behalf of this appellant or docket? To Mr. Chairman, to Ms. Aston, no. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, due process haven't been given. This board has the right to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Vanover. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think that the photos report show, um, um, show the uh, condition. I don't know why the appellant is not present. Uh, this is a hazardous condition. It's, uh, you know, quite concerning. We ask that you deny it and remand it back to the department. Okay. Uh, Councilman Harsh? I spoke to the mayor of Parma about this because this was a Parma police chase that drove a car into the house. And I was wondering if the appellant had filed a moral claim with the city of Parma because they uh, ought to be pursuing that route. But if they're not here, I can't ask that. So I, don't, I have nothing uh, further to contribute. Okay. Well, I think it, being things being what they are, I think we're going to have to deny any time and uh, remand uh, the property back to the Division of Building and Housing. For any further action, motion. So moved. Second. Okay, moved Second. by Mr. Dank. Second by Mr. Bradley. Mr. Hermaski. Yes. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Okay. Notice will be sent within two weeks. Thank you. Have great Wednesdays, everybody. You too. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll go back to the top. 821-23-7023 Union Avenue. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is hazardous conditions issued on December 19th of 2022. Appeal was received January 27th of 2023 requesting for time to abate the Violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Aston Law, Dan Jacobson Law, with the appellant or his or her attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. Do we have Sophia Hester? Oh, Does not look like that Sophia Hester is on the participants panel. Okay, we'll, we'll swear in, uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Van over and then we'll, we'll let the uh, council do their thing. So, uh, Sam, we swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, Mr. Van over. I do. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Aston. Mr. Jacobs is going to handle this one. Okay. Through the chair to Ms. Davis, did notice of today's public hearing get returned to the board's file for any reason? To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. Through the chair to Ms. Davis, did any communication received to the board 
Florida Department regarding this time or on behalf of this. To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. Eight. Having met notice requirements, due process has been given in the board can proceed with this. Okay. Uh, so Mr. Vanover. Um, yeah, Mr. 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 Chairman, we would ask, uh, you know, this building has been uh, in disrepair and is uh, for some time we're having trouble gaining access for reinspection to see if there's anything uh, new. Uh, we would ask that we deny any more time and remand it back to the Department of Building and Housing. Okay, a motion is in order to deny more time, remand the property to the Division of Building and Housing for any further action. Motion? So moved. Okay, moved by Mr. Maskey. Okay, second by Mr. Bradley. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay, notice will be sent out within two weeks. Next docket, A 1823. 995 Ida Avenue. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is interior and exterior maintenance issued December 27th of 2022. Appeal received January 24th of 2023. Present for the hearing. Patty Aston Law, Tom Danover, Building and Housing. Dan Jacobson, law, with the appellant or his or her attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. Hi, yes, this is attorney Mike Ricky on behalf of the uh, property properties by Paris LLC. Thank you. Okay, uh, Solomon, swear to tell the whole truth. So I hope you got. I do. Okay, go ahead. Preliminarily, and let us know what... preliminarily Mr. Chairman, if you the board would take note that it, this violation notice does. Site to smoke detectors and it is a, a rental. Thank you. Okay, he can address that. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Reiki. Thank you. And actually, as a uh, prior to my statement, it's my understanding that the inspector had recently closed the violation. And before I take this board's valuable time, I thought I'd bring that to your attention um, so you can verify saying. Okay. Uh, Mr. Vanover. So, Mr. Chairman, it does appear that the uh, violation notice was closed by the inspector um, May 18th of 2020 as compliance file. Okay, should we give it today's date? That would be my recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, so a motion is in order uh, to uh, give to May 24th, 2023, to abate all the violations. Motion. So moved. Okay. Uh, moved by uh, Mr. Dank, second by Ms. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay. Notice will be sent out within two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Next docket is A1923, AD, let's see, 8800 8, Rondell Road. Application of fees are in order. Notice of violation is interior and exterior maintenance. Issued January 9th of 2023. Appeal received January 25th of 2023. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing. Patricia Aston Law, Dan Jacobson Law, with the appellant or his or her attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. Do we have a Mr. Richardson? Calling user, please mute your phone. No, we yeah, have a calling user number four. Mr. Chairman, it does not look like Mr. Richardson is in the participant panel. Okay, we'll go ahead and swear in uh, Mr. Vanover. Mr. Vanover. 
Uh, Mr. Vanover, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, help you, God. I do. Okay. Uh, who's going to well, ask? Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Uh, through the chair to Ms. Davis, uh, did you notice of today's public hearings get returned to the board's or building department's office for any reason? To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. Through the chair to Ms. Davis, um, has any communication been received on behalf of this town or regarding this document? To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. Due process requirements have been given and met the board can proceed with this hearing. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Vanover. Um, Mr. Chairman to Ms. Davis, uh, can you provide me the uh, last four digits of the violation notice before us, please? Mr. Chairman to Mr. Um, Vanover, the last four digits is 0502. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Mr. Chairman, according to the inspection records, this inspection was conducted 4-14-2023, and that violation notice was found to be uh, all work completed and compliance final. Very good. All right, we'll give a Tuesday uh, to complete. So um, May 24th, 2023, to comp uh, complete the violations. Motion is in order. So move. Second. Okay. Moved by uh, Mr. Bradley, second by Mr. Maskey. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay, notice will be sent within two weeks. Uh, housing docket A, 2223, 3256 West 54th Street. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is exterior maintenance. Issued on January 10th of 2023. Appeal statement received January 30th of 2023, requesting for time to abate the violations. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing. Patricia Aston Law, Dan Jacobson Law, with the appellate or his or her attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. You have to unmute yourself, Mr. Uh, Mac Maximovic. Yes, I'm present. Okay. Okay. So this Mac Maximum, is that correct? Maximovic. That's close okay. enough. Okay, close enough. Very good. Uh, <laughs> solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, Sophie, God. Yes, yeah. I do. Okay, go ahead and let us know what your plans are. Okay, so um, I've completed uh, most of these violations um, uh, on uh, the first violation uh, I replaced and painted uh, all of the looser missing uh, trim I also did the same thing for item 2 that's done um, the point and tuck of the uh, uh, exterior uh, Wall support uh, is complete. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I have the. Uh, I'm gonna go down to this. I have the uh, a large four foot section of the uh, house uh, support uh, is repaired, but I didn't get that done in time to send the pictures in. Um, the, uh, the siding on the garage, I completely replaced all of that. I have a contractor uh, ready to come in and put a new roof, including the deck on my garage. I already gave 50% down to get that job started. It'll be done, it'll be started in about four weeks. Uh, the gutter is repaired. Um, all the debris, the, the two uh, trailers have been removed, the pallets that I had stacked up behind the garage are gone. Uh, the only debris that's in the yard right now are, is the old siding from the garage. I'm going to uh, get rid of that little by little. 
So how much, how much more time does, do you think you need? To um, okay, so I'm thinking uh, another month to get the rest of this done. And okay. I'll be okay. I've all been right. working on it all. I've been working on it all winter. Okay, very good. Let's go over to Mr. Vanover. Mr. Chairman, to uh, excuse me, um, Mr. Chairman to Mr. Maximovich, um, do you live in this home? No, it was a rental, and I and uh, I'm completely finished with renting. I'm going to fix it up and sell it. So, Mr. Chairman to Mr. Maximovich, when? When? What is the date that you need to complete this? Um, let's see. This is. <clears throat> Um, I'm thinking. Uh, uh, give me the the rest of the month of uh, June, and I'll, and I'll be done with uh, uh, the violations that were cited. So he did mention, Mr. Van, over say thirty days, which would be June twenty third, uh, to. Oh, you know what? The, the roof probably won't be done. The the uh, um, the contractor said six to eight weeks, and that was like two weeks ago. And you know how contractors go. I gave okay. him my money down. I hired him through Angela, so he should be a pretty good guy. Okay, Mr. Vanover. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, as a rental, this this property is not registered as a rental. There is no lead safe certification on this property, uh, as well. Um, I don't object to more time, with the understanding that it will not be rented and is not rented, and that the property remains vacant until such a time as all the violations are corrected. Uh, at that point, the, the appellant can make a decision on what he wishes to do if he wishes to sell it or rent it. But if he uh, does rent it, 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 it does require a registration, and it doesn't appear to have had one. Okay, so we, we give you to uh, June thirtieth. Is that going to make uh, make it? Do you think? I believe uh, I believe by June thirtieth, I I'll have everything uh, taken care of. I'm at the mercy of the contractor to get that roof on the garage, but I contracted him to. Replace the decking, the felt, the shingles, everything on that roof. Uh, I've already had uh, a couple years back. I put new shingles on the house itself. Uh, the gutters are fixed. I'm, except for uh, one or two items, uh, I, I'm uh, pretty much up to speed on, on uh, attending to these violations. Okay, we'll give you to uh, June 30th, 2023 to abate all the violations and uh, also uh, that it remain uh, vacant uh, until you get the inspection that clears all this. And uh, also, if you are going to, uh, you're going to have to file if you are going to uh, sell this or, or use this as a rental property. Okay, motion is in order. So moved. Okay, moved Second. by Mr. Maskey, second by Mr. Dank. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay, notice will be sent out within two weeks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Maximovich? Yes. Uh, will I be getting uh, another docket number or how no. is this you, you need to notify. Uh, back to whoever your inspector was uh, to, to get a final inspection on it. Oh, very good then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're done. Okay. Thank you. Notice will be sent out within two weeks. Okay. Um, Mr. Maskey, you still with us? I am for about two minutes. <laughs> um, well, maybe I better give the I don't know. We, we can't finish that up within that time. So we're going to be down to three board members, which means that if our decision is not unanimous, which it usually is, then your appeal is going to go back to the city. If for that reason you prefer not to have your case heard, then let me know when we call your case that you would like to reschedule your case. Okay? So, Mr. Maskey, you're, you're good to go. Um, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So next docket, A2323, 
14722 Coit Road. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is interior, exterior maintenance, and HVAC. Issue December 19th of 2022 and January 23rd of 2023. Appeal statement was received January 10th of 2023, requesting for time to evade the violations. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Aston Law, Dan Jacobson Law. With the appellant or his or her attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. Is there a representative here from Ultimate Products LLC? Okay, doesn't appear to be, right? That is correct. Okay, uh, Mr. Vanover, going to swear you in. Tell me, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. So, you got? I do. Okay, Mr. Jacobson, go ahead. Through the chair to Ms. Davis, the notice of today's public hearing get returned to the board's file for any reason. To the chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. Through the chair, Ms. Davis, did you receive any kind of communication on behalf of this appellant and or document? To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. A notice has been given and due process satisfied the board can proceed with its ruling and hearing today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Vanover. So, Mr. Chairman, this is a corporately owned rental property. Um, that uh, you know, with violations that began with no heat, and uh, then an interior exterior violations, we ask that you deny any more time and remind it, remand it back to the department. Okay, uh, motion is in order to deny more time, remand the property to the division of building and housing for any further action. Motion. So moved. Okay, moved by Mr. Dank. Second. Taken by Mr. Bradley. Mr. Maskey? Mr. Bratley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay, notice will be sent out within two weeks. Next docket is A2723, 3010 East 130th Street. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violation is interior and exterior maintenance issued on January 9th of 2023. Appeal statement received February 7th of 2023 requesting for time to abate the violations. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Aston, Law, Dan Jacobson, Law. With the appellant or his or her, Attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. Is there a Marvin Smith as one of the call-in users? does not look like the appellant is in a participant panel. Okay, uh, we'll move on to uh, Mr. Vanover. Solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help you God. I do. Okay, uh, Mr. Jacobson. <clears throat> Through the chairman to Ms. Davis, did notice of today's public hearing be returned to the board's file for any reason? To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. To the chair to Ms. Davis, have you received any kind of communication on behalf of this appellant and or docket? To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. Due process and notice requirements have been given. The board can proceed with its hearing and ruling today. Okay, Mr. Vanover. Mr. Chairman, we uh, ask that uh, this be denied and remanded to the Department of Building and Housing. It appears that there 
there was some communication with the inspector, but uh, the violations still exist. And uh, we ask that you deny any more time and remand it back. Okay, the motion is in order to deny more time and remand the property to the Division of Building and Housing for any further action. Motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Dank. Mr. Bradley? Yes. I need you to okay. second the motion. Second by Mr. Bradley. <coughs> Mr. Mr. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Dink? What do you say? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. So they'll be getting notice within two weeks. All right. Next, next docket is A2823-11913 Honeydale Avenue. Application of fees are in order. Notice of violation is exterior maintenance issued December 27th of 2022. Appeal statement received February 1st of 2023. Requesting for time to abate the violations. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Aston Law, Dan Jacobson Law, with the appellant or his or her, attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. Are any of the call-in users a representative of PJ Court LLC? Mr. Chairman, it looks like no one is here from this corporation. Okay, Mr. Vanover, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth shall be got. I do. Okay, Mr. Jacobson. Through the Chairman, through Ms. Davis, the notice of today's public hearing is returned to the board's file for any reason. To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. Through the chair to Ms. Davis, do you receive any kind of communication on behalf of this appellant in your docket? To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, on February 1st of 2023, the appellant talked to the administrative assistant for the Board of Building Standards and Building Appeals, Waverly Bowings. She then gave the person on the phone instructions on how to file the appeal, which is how we received the notice of the appeal today. Through the chair, Ms. Davis, any other further communications from the appellant regarding this document? To Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Jacobson, no. Due process requirements and proper notice have been given. The board can proceed today <coughs> with its hearing and ruling. Okay, uh, Mr. Vanover. <coughs> So, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this again is this is a corporately owned rental property um, that, that has not been registered since 2017, and uh, we would ask that you deny any more time or man it back to the Department of Building and Housing for further action. Okay, a motion is in order to deny more time and remand the property to the Division of Building and Housing for any further action. Motion. So, okay, Mr. Bradley. Yes. Uh, second by Mr. Dink. Second. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Okay, notice will be sent within two weeks. What we get next docket is adjudication order building. Dr. A-197-22, 2439 Tremont Street. Application and fees are in order. This is an adjudication order to the Ohio Building Code issued on November 1st of 2022. Appeal was received on December 1st of 2022. This was first scheduled 
before the board on December 7th of 2022, again rescheduled on January 18th of 2023, rescheduled again on March 1st of 2023, and we are here today on May 24th, 2023, underneath the same adjudication order. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Aston Law, Dan Jacobson Law. With the appellate or his or her attorney and representative, please state your name for the record. Dan Bickerstaff. Okay, Mr. Bickerstaff, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth to help you, God. I do. Okay, go ahead and proceed. Sure. Pursuant to our last hearing, we are able to meet with the fire department officials as well as Mr. Tom Vanover. We worked through a solution to move forward in segregating the uh, design and permit process, whereby we had one structure that had three units and an attached structure that had one unit. And what triggered the um, adjudication was the fact that it was viewed as a four unit um, commercial project. So, but by segregating the two buildings in terms of permitting and the fact that we do have a one hour rated wall between the two units, buildings rather, uh, we were able to mitigate and remediate any of the um, violations and issues with regard to the adjudication. Now in compliance? Correct. Okay, Mr. Vanover. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the uh, um, adjudication was, uh, in essence, it was corrected and uh, a plan approval letter was issued. Therefore, there's no adjudication on this property and uh, the uh, and no need for an appeal of that adjudication. So this is this is more or less. Uh, I don't know what the board position is. I I, I believe at this point, Mr. Uh, that the appellant could uh, either uh, get a ruling from the board, which I don't know what that ruling would be, or withdraw their appeal. There's nothing. Mr. Chairman, Mr. there's nothing, there's no further adjudication before the board if it was corrected. So, Mr. Bickerstaff, um, to Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Bickerstaff, Ian, the appropriate thing would have been for him to notify the board and withdraw his appeal, uh, stating that we did send him numerous of emails asking him what was the current condition or situation going on with this docket. We heard none. So, this is why we rescheduled this docket to be closed out from our agenda. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bickerstaff, you're getting scolded here. So uh, basically you just need to withdraw this appeal. Is that, that uh, that's good? Correct. Okay, all right. So this appeal, it's been withdrawn. Um, so he'll do whatever he needs to do to make sure that that, that occurs. So there's uh, no, no further business with this particular doctor session. Okay. All right, um, Thank let's you. see. We I have a withdrawn uh, adjudication order A2423, 1319 E66th Street has been withdrawn. So that, that is right, correct? That is correct. Okay, so uh, we're, we're good to uh, move on to approval of resolutions. A18622, oh. A217, to 18, to 19, to 20, to 21, to 22, 22, uh, a 423, a 623, a 723. Motion. Motion uh, for one, Hold on. Mr. Chairman, uh, one yes. statement, please. For the dockets, a 217, 22, to 18, to 19, 220, and 221. Um, after conversation with me and Council, uh, Patty Aston, it was requested that a document was submitted to give Mr. David Thompson approval to represent the LLC before the board. Uh, the board did notify Mr. Thompson that we needed a letter that was notarized, giving him permission to represent the LLC in front of the board. As of today, the board still have not received any further communication from Mr. Thompson. 
I wanted to put that on the record before we adopted those resolutions for approval of time. Okay, so do should we be approving them if they did not do that? Mr. Chairman, the city submits no. They've not provided the requirements to this board um, to show that this these people have the right to be before the board on these LLCs. On behalf okay, so of the all right. And so we, we will not approve uh, A217 through A222, of, excuse me, A221, 22. Uh, we'll leave them off. And, we, would ask uh, that, we would ask that you send notice to him that the, the, the appeals will be denied for, uh, at the next hearing should he fail to provide that in the next two weeks. Yes, we will do that. We'll, ha Thank we'll you. have uh, Ms. Davis uh, send that out to them. Okay, so uh, we're down to 8222, 8423, 8623, 8723, and the first one, A18622, uh, motion for approval. I revise my motion. To approve you got it those. in there. Okay. Uh, motion by Mr. Dank. Could you repeat that, Mr. Bradley? Okay. So move. Okay, very good. He's got the second. Uh, Mr. Bratley? Yes. Mr. Dink? Yes. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes for May 10th, 2023. Any additions or corrections? Uh, discussion, Mr. Chairman. With the current event of the approval of the resolution, should we hold off on approving those minutes or should they be amended? That's they, they should be amended. Okay. So with, for the record, motions for approval for docket A217-22, A218-22, A219-22, A220-22, A221-22 will be held off for approval. Okay, that, that corrects the minutes. Uh, motion for approval on the, the corrected minutes. Move. Okay, moved by Mr. Bradley. Second. Second by Mr. Dink. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Okay, is there any further business to come before this board? No. Hearing none? Yes. Okay, we are now adjourned. Thank you. I'm on the phone. I don't know. Uh, my name is Sophia Hester with Property uh, 70 uh, on Union. Okay. 82123. Uh, that was docket A2123, Mr. Chairman. A2123. Okay, so um, that was one. Go ahead. Yeah, it, the recommendations was to deny every man. Now that the appellant is here, would you like to reopen this docket? Uh, Mr. Van Anden. They, they, they have the opportunity to come back. Uh, Mr. Van Over, you got a, something to say? I think it would probably be appropriate due to the technology and everything that we just hear the docket. Okay. All right. If we want to do that, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll reopen A2123. Application and fees are in order. Notice of violations is hazardous conditions issued on December 19th of 2022. Appeal received on January 27th of 2023 to abate the violation. Asking for more time to abate the violation. Present for the hearing, Tom Vanover, Building and Housing, Patricia Aston Law, Dan Jacobson Law. With the appellant or his or her attorney or representative, please state your name for the record. This is me, Sophia Hester, the owner. Hey, Ms. Uh, Hester, you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help you guys? No. Okay, go ahead and let us know what your plans are. Um, someone had hit hit my building, so um, I had the contractor. He came and 
did the permit, so they in process of doing the work now. Mr. Mr. Chairman and Ms. Davis, could you provide me the building address, please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Hold on. Uh, we'll hear from Ms. Davis. Hold on. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Did you say someone hit the button? This is 7023, right? That is correct. 7023 okay. Union right. Avenue. Okay. Um, well, we still, we could go back to, uh, well, how much time do you think you need to abate the violation? Ms. Hester? Uh, well, which um, about, is she, Mr. Chairman, to, um, is she referring to a new violation that was issued to this property or the one that was before the board? Um, because I don't know what, give this to the Linden Housing Council. For uh, it, was, it was only one violation when someone ran into my building. From the front, the second court comment. It was made up. Mr. Mr. Chairman, to to the appellate, how what is the time? How long until it's finished? Negative copy that. Okay. Ms. Hester. Yes. Ms. Mr. How long until the work is completed and the violations are corrected? Um, probably I probably need about um uh, a couple of months. So we're looking at 60 days. Yeah, that should be fine. Mr. Chairman, this is Patty to Mr. Vanover. Was there a permit pulled? There was, there is a permit and the permit, uh, as, as stated previously, the permit shows activity, but there's been uh, difficulty with the inspector getting, uh, contacting the, uh, applicant or the contractor. Mr. Chairman, we don't object to 60 days with the expectation that the contractor will reach out to the inspector um, within the next week to set up an inspection. Okay, Ms. Hester, do you understand that? Yes. Okay, very good. Then what we can do, we'll give it to uh, July 23rd, which would be 60 days, 2023, to abate the violations and uh, that you're required to have the contractor reach out uh, and contact the inspector within a week. Motion. Okay. So move. Okay, moved by Mr. Bradley. Second. Okay, second by Mr. Dink. Mr. Bradley. Yes. Mr. Dink. Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Okay, uh, you'll be getting noticed uh, within two weeks of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I believe that concludes all of our business. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> okay, all righty. Thank you all. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye-bye.